about going out here. I heard uh, from several of the locals that late at night, you go out there, they see things moving off in the back end of the cemetery. They've had uh, things come right up to their cars and stuff while they're out there parking. Like, like entities? Yeah. All the stories uh, revolve around apparitions. They've had the apparitions come right up to the windows and knock on the windows. And there's been small rumors of devil worshippers and stuff like that. Well, I don't really know the whole story on it. I just know the rumors of Satan worshippers and all that junk going out there. That's what concerns me. I'm more scared of the living than I am the dead. And I just don't want to walk up on somebody's ritual or become part of one. I just hope that we are the only people out there tonight. Hopefully it's too cold for anybody else. Good old country roads. Now this looks good. This is a good big cemetery. When we were doing our day investigation, I have a fascination about all the old graves. I'd look at the dates on them. And this one's 1883. If you read hers, it's Teresa, but I can't read this. And I wonder who they were, how they died. Before we go out to investigate a place, we always go out and look at it during the daytime. We mainly go out there to survey the area. By doing that during the daytime, we familiarize ourselves with the area. I was there documenting. We uh, take notes and uh, document everything. I like to go to places during the day before we hit them at night to get a lay of the land to see what's around. I like to see if I have any feelings. I'm not psychic or sensitive or anything like that, but sometimes if a place is active, you'll get what I consider to be a vibe, and it's just like, it's a creepy feeling. We usually split off in teams, and we meet up after a little while back in one location, and a lot of times we just Scattered. We have no idea what the oldest grave is because a lot of them were etched in everyday sandstone. Looks like 1908. You know, as you're walking around, you're constantly looking down at your equipment, you're taking photographs, and yeah, you're going to run into tree branches. Our spirit, I do believe, is a, is a form of energy. So you take away the body, that energy is still present. Uh, so that's why I use the EMF, try to detect that, that energy. I believe when you die, your spirit is still roaming this earth. That's why I go stand. I'm trying to solve that. Maybe, maybe we can come, come to a conclusion. I'm looking for cold spots. You know, right now I'm maintaining about a 43 to a 45 degree temp. Any temperature variation there? No, about 43 to 45. You hit a headstone, it jumps to 54. It's 42. But the ambient temperature out here is about 43 to 46. So if I come across an entity, it's going to really drop below that. It, it has jumped down to at least 20 degrees. When we're out together as a group, we kind of drop the professionalism and we kind of act as a family and we jump around and we kid around. And Steve is about 52, 53. So we try to put a little fun into it. <laughs> uh, we don't get around about our findings. Can it be the metal? No. I'm getting nothing. They must not 
like me today or something. <laughs> Right at that moment, something happened. Steve took a photo and got all excited about it. It was something really weird. We can't explain what he got. He got something. I can't, I can't explain what happened to the camera. We still don't know what it was, but it was definitely not a camera malfunction. It was something that was out there. That dark corner, he's got his kids. What, what is it? I, I don't know. I don't know. Right at that moment, something happened. Steve took a photo and got all excited about it. And it was something really weird. We can't explain what he got. He got something. We still don't was, but it was definitely not a camera malfunction. It was something that was out there. Getting back? Yeah. Strange. What? That dark corner he's got in his. What, what is it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But it shouldn't be the camera. Well, it, uh, it, 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 won't it appears to be the camera. Yeah. Oh well, talk to it. Maybe it'll fix itself like Cam's did at Bob's. <laughs> <laughs> and your uh, EMF uh, reading was uh, 0.5? Yeah, 0.7. it was, uh -huh, it was uh, 0.7, and it was a little more halfway to, to your left there. You pretty much got a point five point seven. Most of like three anyway, until we got to this uh Until I got to that family plot. Right, the, the rod iron gate did a shot on it. Yeah, that's getting uh flat at them and it shot up. Yeah. Yes. Uh, after we go go look over a site during the daytime and we've gotten ourselves familiar with that site, we always go out to a restaurant, get back and relax and wait for it to get dark outside. We, work up a game plan on how we're going to investigate the site. In 1896, the Antioch School had 113 pupils and two teachers. So basically, this little old town was more of a community than a city. It didn't thrive very long. Basically, the two churches is what brought it together. How long did the town survive? 1870 to 1900, uh, 30 years. 30 years? Sir. What destroyed the town? It just faded away. It just away. faded away? Yeah, because uh, one, the railroad didn't come through there, and it was off too far away from it. I noticed one of the children's graves. Is there some kind of disease outbreak? No, back in those olden times, uh, the life expectancy for children was very hard. There was a lot of disease and uh, plagues going around at that time. What have you heard about this place? What, what is the, uh, the legend? Yeah, what's the Well, the legends say that uh, there's activity in the back end, mostly, of the cemetery. Area folks say that if you go back into the back end of that cemetery, and around two o'clock in the morning, you'll see entities and movement in the back end of that cemetery when there's nothing but open pasture. 